Welcome to the Fox One Corp series of training videos. I'm Dave Springford. Please visit me online at www.foxonecorp.com for your glider supplies. In this video, I want to look at how we can connect an external flarm to your LX9000 computer system. In this case, we'll be connecting a power mouse, but we could just as easily connect a power flarm core or a portable to the LX9000. To connect to the 9000, what we need is we need to use this 5-pin Binder RS-232 and we can get a special cable from LX that has the mating end for it. And so depending what you're going to connect the other end of this cable, in this case with the power mouse has an RJ45 and for a power flarm core you could use the RJ45 but people often have a display plugged into that port so instead you can get this cable with the Binder 5-pin on one end and a DB9 connector on the other end. So the first thing that we want to do is we simply want to connect these two bender plugs together and once they're connected we want to take the RJ45 and we're going to connect that into in the power mouse case port 1 of the power mouse. Now that those are connected the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to power on the LX9000. I'll select my default profile and I'll just skip through the elevation. So now one thing that we should notice is that if we take a look at our power mouse we can see the lights are flashing on it. The power has been provided from the LX9000 through that 5 pin binder into the power mouse or into the power flarm core. So there's no need to apply separate power into the flarm unit. So what we want to do now is we want to go to setup and we want to scroll down to hardware and select hardware. Within hardware we want to go to the flarm in the ADSB module and select that. And we can see already that it's recognized our flarm. It has the serial number, it has the firmware version 6.67 and it's already recognized that it's attached to our external PC port with a baud rate of 19,200. So in this case I'm running version 8 of the firmware on the LX9000. In the past older versions you had to populate this baud rate and the, uh, the port field right here. Uh, so with this newer version it seems that it's picked that up automatically. So once that's in we can do various other things we can set up competition mode. What that does is removes everything from your display in terms of climb rates and contest IDs for everybody. Reduce warnings is good when you're flying contests. You get less in the way of warnings from your flarm, which is really helpful in large gaggles. Send declaration. Anytime you create a task within your uh, LX9000, it will send that declaration into your flarm and you can set up no tracking if you do not wish to be tracked by OGN ground stations. We can also set up our PCAS range, our ADS-B range. In this case this power mouse has the ADS-B module in it. So now we'll close this and we'll look up some other places where we might want to change things on our menu. So The next menu I want to look at is warnings and within warnings I want to go here to flarm and there we can set what warnings we're going to get. And so traffic, if we have traffic selected, then every time the flarm senses a new aircraft within your vicinity, you get a warning message. If you're out flying cross country by yourself, that's a good warning to get. If you're flying a competition, it's not good because the uh, LX will just constantly be telling you about traffic when you have 30 or 40 or 50 other gliders in the sky with you. Now this is the real trick to setting up the flarms, is this alarms. In this field for alarms, I have an option of low, medium, and high alarms. And what this means is it doesn't mean low, medium, and high number of warnings. It means low, medium, and high risk warnings. So if you set it to high alarms, you will get the least number of alarms. Only the highest risk of collision alarms will be provided to you. Medium is a good alternative to set it to and low means you'll get warnings for everything and everybody. Undirected warnings, that's for the PCAS part, mode C. 
If it uh, senses a mode C transponder in the vicinity, it will tell you a distance and an altitude above and below. And again, we can set low, medium, and high alarms on those as well. The warning, what do we want it to include? Horizontal distance, vertical distance, those are two important things. Relative bearing, it's always going to give us. And graphical presentation, what that will do, it will put a little ribbon up at the top that's maybe three quarters of an inch tall, and that will have text as well as the clock showing you the clock position of the traffic and the above below. So flyer mornings, that's a good place to set things. Another place you want to set things is in the graphics menu. So under graphics, again we're going to go down to Flarm, and in here we definitely want to show Flarm objects, and we can set the above color. Usually I set the above color to something like white, like the clouds. I set near color to red for emergency, and I select below color to something like green for the grass. We also need, if we want to see PCAS targets, we need to select this Show PCAS option. And that Show PCAS is going to display a circle around your current position, a dashed circle, in the uh, appropriate radius for how far away the target is. We're going to go back into Hardware. And on the Hardware menu, we're going to look at the V8 indicator. And the V8 indicator, this is where we want, if we want the clock display to show up, we're going to select this Flarm option right here. And if I press Demo and we watch the V8, we can see that we get a clock display of the traffic. Okay, if that Flarm is not selected, then you won't get any display on your Vario. One other place we can set Flarm is in the sounds, and so we're going to go to Voice, and in here we can see we can get Flarm traffic warnings, collision warnings, obstacle warnings, and Flarm alert zones. So in North America we don't typically have Flarm alert and Flarm obstacle databases. Flarm traffic can get pretty annoying if you're in a contest, so I'll often remove that, and I only want a warning if there's going to be a collision. In alarms, you have much the same thing, so instead of a voice message telling you the position of the target, you'll have a beep. And so in here, we could do something like set Flarm traffic just to give us a beep, so every time a new aircraft is spotted, we get a little beep on the Alex 9000. So that's how you'd set up a Flarm when you wanted to install one and connect it to your Alex 9000. Hopefully you've learned something new about your flight computer today. Please visit me online at www.fox1corp.com and subscribe to this Fox1Corp YouTube channel.